Hey guys, I'm here with Tim from Everyday Tactical Vids, and we're out here to look at the top five tools that you'll need in an urban survival situation. The Wave is a tool that I know really well. It's one I've used before, it's one I know I can trust. So Tim's chosen three, I've chosen three, and then we've agreed on two. So we're going to show you the tools we've chosen. We're gonna show you a couple of skills associated with those tools. So what I wanna show you is how to make cordage out of a two liter bottle. And then we'll talk about the two we agreed on and why they're so important. Ready to go? Let's do it. Okay. Okay, so I grew up outside of New York City. I live north of Boston now. I spend quite a bit of time in urban settings. One of those things that I definitely think you need in an urban survival situation is a good knife. And so I chose the Benchmade Adamas. This thing is just a bear of a knife. And yet, because it's a folding knife, I can still conceal it in my pocket quite easily. So what I wanna show you is how to make cordage out of a two liter bottle. Maybe you blow out a shoelace. This is a way to actually replace the shoelace. Maybe part of your bag breaks and you need to replace a part of your bag. You can use cordage from a two liter bottle to do that. So in order to make cordage, what you're gonna do is get your two liter bottle, push that knife into the two liter bottle. Then either start rotating the bottle around or you can rotate the knife around the bottle. What you're gonna get are these long strands of very strong material that's gonna be useful in an urban survival scenario. You can use this cordage to lash something to your bag, fix a shoe, or hang something up. Really strong, great in an urban survival situation. So growing up in Las Vegas, did a lot of hitchhiking, did a lot of train hopping, spent a lot of time in urban environments in kind of different situations. Obviously in an urban survival situation, you always want your pocket knife on you. So the pocket knife that I chose was the Microtech Ultratech. So there's some obvious reasons for this. One-handed opening, closing, which is really nice. Get the glass breaker on the end. But the other reason is a little more practical. In a home defense situation, they say you should have a pump shotgun because there's something about that sound that alerts the intruder that this person is armed. And I think the same goes for an OTF as well. There's something about the action and the sound there that would hopefully help dissuade somebody from wanting to engage you in that way. So Microtech, Ultratech, great option for any urban survival situation. Another good item to have in an urban survival situation is a good multi-tool. So I went with the Leatherman OHT. The concept behind this one is that you can open it with just one hand. So now I've got access to a bunch of tools and you can use these in a variety of different ways. So maybe you're repairing a car, maybe you're fixing gear. You can even use this in a medical situation. And then if you need access to a particular place, you could use a multi-tool in that way as well. So Tim chose the OHT for his multi-tool. And for mine, I actually chose the Wave. And the reason I chose the Wave is that I know this tool. And this is something that's really key with any sort of survival bag, bug out bag, in car bag, anything like that. You wanna make sure you're using tools that you know and that you've used before or that you've practiced using. The Wave is a tool that I know really well. It's one I've used before. It's one I know I can trust. Now, the Wave's got a ton of different features to it. Um, but what I wanna teach you guys is if you were caught out in an urban survival situation, uh, public transportation is shut down, your car broke down, um, there's not a lot of food in grocery stores, whatever it may be, you may not have a viable tool on you to get food, which is an important part of survival. Um, so I'm actually gonna show you guys how to open a can without any tools at all. So what I have here is a can of tuna. Obviously this work on any canned food that's out there. They put the top on and they make a seal right along the lip of the can. And as a result, if you rub this lip against something coarse, such as concrete, it'll break down the, uh, the seal and then you can squeeze the top open. Getting some tuna juice, that's a good sign. Oh, <laughs> uh, it's a little bit stronger than I thought I was. <laughs> maybe some of this food is wasted, maybe it's not, depends on how hungry you are, but all the food in the can is still completely edible. My third item is a compact first aid kit. So it's always great to have something to deal with medical situations. This base kit from UST is a good place to start, and I always buy a first aid kit and then supplement it with other items that I think are important. So I did that with this kit right here, and uh, some of the additional things I would add into a kit are, you know, beyond your basic band-aids for cuts or blisters, maybe think about a CPR mask, a tourniquet. I always also add in ibuprofen and acetaminophen, because even just taking a headache away when you've got a headache in a bad situation, that can keep you in the game, keep you engage so that you can definitely affect survival when things have gone bad in your city. All right guys, so my third pick for any urban survival kit is to have a schmog. This here is called the sarong, same thing. I've been traveling with this thing for about 20 years now and find it useful in many situations. Use it as a sling, use it as a tourniquet, you could use it as a backpack. Keep yourself warm, keep yourself cool. There's honestly like an infinite variety of ways that you can use this. And this one here actually saved my life. A few years ago, I was going 65 miles an hour on a motorcycle, hit a deer head on, broke all the bones on the left side of my body pretty much. 
was off the road trying to signal a car, couldn't quite get there, and had this around my neck keeping me warm. I used it to signal down a car, and this is the only reason that car saw me, and literally probably the only reason I'm standing here now. A really great inclusion into any urban survival kit. Now I'm gonna head over, me and Tim are gonna meet back up, and we're gonna talk through the other two items that we agreed on, and uh, talk a little bit about urban survival philosophy. I have to say, I, I saw you making some of that cordage off the uh, plastic bottle. Yep. That, was, that was pretty cool, man. Yeah, and likewise, the, the Schmog scarf, to wrap yeah. that up, and it's like, oh, you got a backpack out of a piece of cloth. I've never seen that done before, like in person. That was neat. That was yeah, really cool. I, I love that thing, man. And you guys might have noticed it's got a couple holes in it. Like I said, I've had that thing for like 20 years. Well I, probably, I probably should get a new one. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so we've come back together guys to talk about what the two items are for urban survival that we kind of both agreed were, were important to have in any pack. And uh, one of those items is a water key. And now if you don't know what a water key is, what this does, as you can see here, it's got kind of the, the square inlets on the, the different parts of the key. And uh, what a water key does is it allows you to get water when you see a spigot on the side of a building, but there's not a turning knob. The water key will help you get access to that. And so this can be helpful in a lot of different situations. For the other item we agreed on, it was a flashlight. And obviously it's gonna give you light when you're out in the dark. I mean, and if power's out, you're trying to get around, great to have a flashlight. Uh, something that's got a little bit more heft, it's not a little tiny light, so it can throw some light so you can see maybe down a road you were thinking going down, is it safe, is it not? The other thing too is that a good flashlight, even during the day, can be a self-defense tool. If you get up close to somebody, they're getting aggressive with you, if you give them some light right in the eye, that's really gonna make them kind of step back and at least it gives you a little space. So between the water key and the flashlight, those are two items we agreed on really quickly, really easily. I think especially here on YouTube, you get, you get a lot of really fun scenarios, right? Like right. we all want to be Arnold Schwarzenegger, right? right? Like, <laughs> you get these fun scenarios of, you know, there's riots in the streets and you have to get home 20 miles away. Right. Um, and I feel like a lot of times you have to take some of this stuff with a little bit of a grain of salt. Sure. Um, because the reality of it is, is when we're talking about urban survival situations, I feel like we're talking about, um, you know, you had, you had experiences after 9-11, there was public transportation was all shut down, right, yep. right? So you legitimately could be at work five, six miles, 10 miles away from home and have to get home kind of sure. in an emergency situation. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Um, or if we're talking natural disasters, Absolutely, right? A natural thing. disaster is another real reason, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, you want to think about what is most likely to happen, right? Mm -hmm. And then even in the bug out scenario, if power went out here where we are in Las Vegas today, I wouldn't get out of the hotel and go to the desert. I'd stay in my hotel room. I'd bug in before I bugged out, right? 100%. And so we want to be realistic about it. But if there's a situation where Sam at work, a natural disaster hits and I have to get home, well now I've got a couple items that will make me be more effective in getting home to my family. Exactly. The other thing with, I think, specifically with urban survival and having like a go bag in your car or at work, or having some of these items on you on yep. a constant basis, yep. is to think about what season you're in. Um, and that's another critical thing. If you load up a bag and you throw it in your car uh, for breakdown or whatever, and you're not trading in good shoes or you're not trading out batteries or you're not putting in a jacket, you know, in the appropriate weather, yep. it's not gonna do you that much yeah, good. It's, and it's you know? with technology today, all you do is put a reminder in your phone. Like, yep. okay, once every three months, check your batteries, check, make sure you have a coat that you're set and then you don't have to go back to it every week, you're three or four times a year to make sure your bag is updated. Exactly. And I, and I think the final thing to consider with urban survival in any survival situation, whether we're talking about outdoor survival, urban survival, bugging in, bugging out, doesn't matter, is to know your tools. Sure. It's yeah. critical. Um, that's another thing, you know, you buy a fire starter, you throw it in a bag and you're like, yeah, I'll use that as a, you know, my 48 hour kit when the time comes. Right. I hope you know how to use it. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly, yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's another big thing is, is make sure you know your tools. Yeah, yeah, and your number one tool is right here. Yep. You gotta have, if you know, if you know and understand, knowledge weighs nothing, right? Tools are an addition to what you already know in your brain and how to carry out skill sets. So tools should supplement what you already have as far as, you know, an ability to survive in a situation. I like that. Mindset's really important. Yeah. So let us know in the comments, guys. What do you think? What do you think that you, the top five urban survival tools are? What do you think something that we should have included, a knife we should have included? Uh, just let us know. Thanks, Tim, for being here. Yeah, Appreciate thanks it. for having me. Yeah, and where can the good people of YouTube find you? Everyday Tactical Vids on YouTube. Everyday Tactical Vids. We'll see you there. Cool. Thanks, guys. Thanks.